you've just started Elden Ring, overwhelmed with the combat, not finding the success you're looking for, and getting slightly frustrated and thinking about a refund, do not worry. Beginner's Basic Combat Guide for you to kind of find your way throughout the game. Also, some hints and pointers at how to actually find your direction. Are you in the right leveled area? If you get stuck, how do you progress? What exactly do you do with an in Elden Ring if you don't know how to get further? First, we're gonna start with the combat, then we're gonna start with the meta stuff. We'll show you in order of the samurai. Reason for the samurai is it's extremely beginner friendly. It's a max dexterity vigor build, so you're just getting vigor and dexterity up. It means a lot of life and a lot of damage. And the cool thing is you have the Ushigatana, which has the sheet unsheet ability. If you're pressing your charge button, in my case it is the left L2, and then you're pressing a heavy attack, you do this overhead swing. Costs a little bit mana. But the good thing is, if you do this overhead swing three times or two times, depending on the enemy you're fighting against, or really big ones four times, you do actually stagger them, and then you can do an execute attack or a backstab. Sometimes the backstab is also a front stab into the chest, depending on where the weak spot of your opponent is. Therefore, we're going to call it an execute instead, because it can be kind of confusing. Let's begin with a very important basic. You do have your equipment load right behind me. It actually does say equipment load. And you can go from medium, heavy, or light. Right now I start with medium, which is very important. And yes, also items that you have here equipped do play a role when it comes down to load. So if you're wearing a heavy shield, even though you're not using it, it still puts load on you. Most important part is we do have the roll here right now, relatively quick. But if you do actually have a heavy load, you do a fat roll and it costs more stamina. Medium, in my eyes, is the best kind of roll to go for because it gives you good mobility and overall being able to zoom over the map. Now, we do have an opponent here, and you can always try to sneak up on your opponents to execute them or backstab them. In this case, it is actually a backstab. So you just get behind them, and then you press R1 or light attack, which instantly leads to an execute. And everyone can do this. I mean, you can do a more kind of assassinish play style to get people down. Very simple, very quick, especially if you have strong opponents. It can be very annoying. There are opponents with a shield, there are opponents with lances, great axes, and so on. But if you manage to get behind them, you can execute them. The fun part is you can also do this mid combat. So if you do have your opponent in front of you and he's hitting you, you can also roll behind them to actually give them a weak spot execute. You can get this gentleman here, he attacks us, we circle him, and as we get behind him, we circle him, we circle him, we circle him, and as we get behind him, you can execute him. So it also works mid combat. You don't actually have to go further or anything. You don't have to get there apart. Now, why the samurai for actual combat? So this was the execute combat, right? But you have this guy here now with his spear and his shield. Can be very annoying to fight against. I do my sheet ability. Uppercut, dead. Samurai, very strong in the beginning. And if you keep your weapon upgraded, you actually keep staying this strong. Obviously, you do have to look at your mana. So your mana is going down. But it also recharges if you actually beat successful opponents. So you can get a ch flash charge back for beating them. So you have this guy, he comes up, cheat, kill. Again, lock on, cheat the weapon, kill. L2, for that, for the special attack of the weapon, and then go for that. It's very, very simple. Like with the samurai in the beginning, you're absolutely fantastically off to go. And then again, sneak back onto an opponent and execute them. And this is this is like for normal hitting now, so you just spam your attack. It's actually very simple. And now we're getting this shield guy. We're pulling him a little bit in this direction. This is all normal opponents, obviously. You do lock on. He's doing this. Usually, it's always better to roll into an opponent than away from an opponent. Because if you're rolling into them, you always stay closer and you can do stuff. If you're rolling away from attacks, you never know what the range is and how delayed they are. Also, you have to get into the into them again, which costs stamina. So if you roll, you're very close. Also, a lot of weapons later will have a roll hit. So this one doesn't really have one, right? You don't have a roll hit, but other weapons do have a roll hit. So when you're rolling, 
that you straight up do an attack. Don't have anything to actually show that off to you. But my main character has a nice big sword. And when I roll, he just instantly do an attack out of the roll to do this. But now, obviously, these are standard opponents. So uh, getting like your tactics to kill standard opponents, it's kind of like to mitigate losing ch flask charts, you know? But what about a boss now? Or especially animal opponents? Because animal opponents are the worst. Uh, let's go into this barrow here in the very beginning because you can already find very early on bosses. And now we're getting into a wolf area. Wolves are extremely annoying. In this case, you got to figure out how to bait them. Because if you go here, the wolves from behind will actually attack you. So you can just make them jump up. Lock on, get close, hit them. Because wolves often tend to jump away. So you want to be as close as possible. Good thing is, you do not only have the heavy attack uppercut, you also have a light attack uppercut. See that? So you do your R2, uh, your L2, and then you do your R1. So now you roll away, create some distance between you and them. Get them up close and personal. Sheet, unsheet, get in. You get almost killed by the wolf because wolves are super annoying to fight against. As you can see, then you just make your rolls, double heal, and you're good to go. So, like, it doesn't matter how much I actually play. I always hate playing against wolves. So that was a lot of my flash charges to kind of, like, get some few pretty annoying wolves killed, right? We have this one. We go, he's trying to come up. Let's ignore him. You can also charge. Very good against animals. Because if you charge, you're just straight into them. But animal opponents can be, like, the worst kind of nuisance out there. Now, this is a boss. I don't have any heals, anything annoying left, but... He's the first boss. He's a beast man of Farmazula. Charge. Hit. One, two. This is yell. You roll away. He does his attacks, but he can't hurt you, right? He charges up. Gets me. Ow. Unfortunate. Bring distance between you again. Have him walk up. R2. Hit him again. One, two. Go away. Tries to hit you. Doesn't work. Walks up again. R2. One. Oh. And now I'm out of mana, as you see, which is unfortunate, right? But you can still do the attack. So you can still sheen. Hit him. He does less damage. You're good off to go, right? And that's how you kill your first boss. That's it. I mean, obviously, you do have to keep your rolling on. But you do notice how simplistic it can be to actually get the things done early on. And now you would say, but Pony, this doesn't work against story bosses. It does. It does. The important part is, especially with the sheet unsheen, the more often you do it on an opponent, you can get him staggered in a row. So for example, Market the Fell, which is the first story boss, hashtag spoiler alert, sorry. Uh, you do get him with one, two, three times hit and he gets staggered. I mean, obviously, I can't show this on these opponents because these opponents die a little bit fast. But that would be the way. Now, how do you know if you're actually in an area where you're supposed to be? Because obviously, you do have a vast map and the map gets only vasta, vasta, and vasta. But how do you know if you're now in the right spot? If you're actually moving according to where you should be? If you're not actually, you know, progressing too fast? If you're supposed to kill this knight in the very beginning? That being said, technically, you can always be everywhere and kill everyone. But realistically, what I do is I check how long does it take me to kill normal mobs. For example, this boss right now, I would only do a sliver of HP damage. Sliver. Therefore, I know I need to upgrade my weapon further. If you're not dealing 300, 400 damage with one swing as a dex build to the boss, your weapon is not strong enough. So we're going to the smithing table and you can check if you can strengthen your armament. Right now, not enough frigging smithing stones. In the description below, I'll link an interactive map from our boys from Fix Your Life, I cast, where it shows where all the smithing stones are. Obviously, don't look at that if you don't want to get spoilers. But this is the way how you get yourself set up for what is there to come. You get with the different smithing stones 
to the point then that you can do more and more content. Also as a Dex Vigor build, you always have good HP and good damage, usually to fight off everyone. Most importantly though, what you have to understand is that no matter how much HP you get, bosses will always do significant damage to you. Cheat. But the question is how much damage will you do to them? So you can beat the whole game with your basic weapon and your basic armor. You actually don't need any further armor. Armor is kind of there to check you're fighting a boss that does a lot of magic damage. Choose a magic resistance armor. You're fighting a boss that does a lot of fire damage and so on. You get the drift, right? Now, how do you find out where to actually go? Oh, that's very simple. The game actually points you in the direction. So you can follow these golden lights that roughly show you into a direction. But that's not, not only all. You can also look for these bent over witchies and these bent over witchies tell you actually where secret burrows are close to you. Also something very important when you're running, you can do a charge attack. This is my normal R2, but when I'm running, this is my heavy attack charging. And that heavy attack charging is obviously very useful depending on the opponent you're fighting against. A backstab is always best to start with, but technically you can also go into a charge attack and then follow the charge attack up with an overhead swing. So you do this, charge attack, sheed, overhead, dead or staggered already. Because the charged attack or the charge attack here is a heavy attack and these heavy attacks contribute into the stagger meter again. Now we examine this and it actually points with a magical line in this direction. So what you're going to do is you're just going to follow this. And that's how you actually figure your way out through more and more content again. You can discover the whole world. You can go wherever you want. And also don't feel pressured to kill the first story boss if you don't get past him. Get better. Get stronger. Use Ashes of War and use summons to aid you. That's what they're there for. You can get Ashes of War to then aid you in combat. And technically, with Ashes of War and Summons, you're always able to beat every single boss. The very cool thing about the Samurai on top, fighting-wise, is that he has Belit damage. We have a Blood build up, and that means if we hit three or four attacks in a row, I think with this Katana it was five, so slowly in a row, then we're going to be building up Blood damage and actually do Blood damage. Again, R2, Sheen. Sheet, unsheet, he hits me, R2, boink, dead. And here you see if you actually do hit these guys with your R2, they get straight away staggered. Let me actually show that to you if we can find one more of these nerds. They're very annoying because they have a huge blood buildup. And yes, they can kill you with one combo. So never think you're actually safe against them. They can kill you with one weapon combo. So let's try to make him jump down. See, he's stunned. And then we're in front of him and execute. That's how it works. In this case, like, you, you you know, this is what I meant with the backstab. So we're doing the R1 to execute the light attack. But how are you going to know that it's, you know, a backstab? Can you please come down here? Thank you. Then we do this again. Get staggered. So we could go from behind or we could go from in front. To then do the R1 to execute him. But it's obviously like, it's not, it's not the execute there you know it's not the backstab it's kind of like that now it's just very important to actually know what your opponents are doing so these are doing like these throw knives and then they do a weird charge attack but you see how good your r1 is checking up on them right how your how your combo ability is actually tracking them so that does work very nicely do i actually need to go there no i didn't go need to go there I need to jump down here now we're trying to show you the next burrow boss so we activate this one here right now and then we show you the burrow boss because obviously that one can be a pain in the bud now you open this door and you could be like yeah let's just charge in and do the boss but we're gonna be a smart little someone and we're gonna refill our flask run back in and i just recently saw a video of someone talking about he just started the game and then he's facing this boss and who makes this kind of boss you know super frustrating this is arguably one of the easiest bosses in the whole game and he does this and you always want to go for distance because he does a kind of instant swing like this where he will hit you 
even when you're standing to the side and doing a side roll. But now, after he did that, he has one more of this. And then he starts just flying. And with the flying, you can always land your combos. Double roll, combo. Double roll. And then he does this again. And see, with my heavy attacks, I just... And staggered. Now, I chained a lot of overhead cuts in a row. And I can execute him. He stands there. And I can do another one. Roll double. Go out. Get the heal for the mana going. And then keep doing the same. So he goes for this. You roll out so he doesn't hit you. You do your overhead swing. He goes for fire. You run in a circle so you don't get fired. And then you do it again. Done. Easy Combat 101. And now, after killing that boss, with the Spirit Calling Bell, you can also use Ashes to summon Varai Spirits. Summoning typically consumes FP. You can only summon one type of spirit at a time, and you cannot summon spirits during multiplayer. Now, with these spirits, bosses are easier than ever. Because if you come to a situation where you feel overwhelmed and you can't progress in the story, you're feeling like, man, one-on-one -on -one is not going to work out. Well, no worries. Summon spirits to help you. In case you get stuck and you can't progress in a fight, you can also use summons. I do have a significant amount of them already down here on my level 90 character. So you could summon Wandering Noble Ashes. There is freaking Great Shield Soldier. You have the Cadence Cell Sword Ashes. And all, like you, you do notice, this is the Banished Knight Oleg. In order to summon them, you do need a Spirit Calling Bell. And they cannot be summoned everywhere. They can summon in very hard regions. Not just like in general, straight up. The regions are predetermined by From Software. And that's where you can then summon help. A lot of time that would be in boss fights and so on. Do you need the spirit calling bell in the very beginning from Rena, so you're actually able to get that done? And then you can just always call summons to your help to guide you in battle. Sadly, I don't have a boss available right now where I can actually show that to you. I know there's somewhere in this god bedamned city a boss hidden, but yeah, the word hidden just hits the right thing here, right? Also, here you see how much damage they do to me, right? So they do a significant portion of damage. Now look at the significant portion of damage I do back to them. So I know I'm actually good for this area because I can two hit them, right? I mean, I'm obviously past this area already. But if you need like five, six, seven hits to kill a normal rabble mob here on the road, then you might actually be too far already content wise. And you should either upgrade your weapon or do some side missions before you move up to that. Oh, by the way, what the hell? Very annoying statue. And that doesn't count as a tough area, I guess. So that's how later, when you find the right weapon, you just blast your way through obstacles and never get into trouble again. You can just refill your mana. See, this is one of these opponents I was talking about. Hard and annoying. And that's why you have then your cool special abilities to just fight them off and bleed them. And I hate these kind of knights. They're just always annoying. There's like nothing that makes them desirable. But you do notice how with the right weapon, we're just getting our way through this. So we have a very powerful ability, which is the Blood Cursed Swing, if I'm not mistaken. Um, that just allows us to really zoom through these gentlemen easy. I've been here before. Wow. This, this huge, uh, this whole thing is like a huge jungle. And you do notice how much damage this guy just dealt to me, right? And that's like, that's okay. Because again, I have a huge life bar, correct? But these guys, they still hurt me. And that's like what I meant with, it doesn't matter how much life you have, you can always die. There's never safety from death. Death is always just lurking around the corner. The only safety, quotation marks, you can get is by doing more damage and hurting these gentlemen than more but there's no safety from actual death somehow the very good thing about elden ring compared to other souls like titles is the amount of stamina you have because 
you have a significant amount of stamina and I've actually not skilled a single point of endurance in my 90 levels right now. And I do always have enough. Like you can hit, you can roll. You can see how, how many times I can roll before I remotely even run out of something. See, there you stagger him. The only problem with staggering this knight is that I never figured out where actually his um, point is to get him executed. So this one you're supposed to kill way later, FY, not early. A trick on this knight is actually to stay on his uh, shield sign. And then you still die because you by far don't have enough HP. Also, there's one thing I didn't go down up in, which is blocking or, you know, counterattacking, which I, in general, do not advise new players to do most of the time, because I feel it's better to get used to the rhythms of what the bosses can do. Obviously, if you get very proficient at this, the, the amount of countering you can do is insane. As you can see, I never use that. I always do it too early, and uh, finding the right points is quite tricky. So I've beaten every single Dark Souls games without ever using a block or a parry, you know? Like never never use blocks, never use parries, never actually use shields to make sure that I don't take damage. Using shields is a valid way and it's a play style, but it's nothing I usually advocate because it, it just takes um, insane amounts of, you know, precision. You need to find the exact right hitting moments. And as you can see with delayed attacks, it can be tricky to then find that. And it can often cause you to take unnecessary damage. See, that that was, that was that one. But see how much damage I had to take to even get that block. And you can do that for boss fights too. Bosses have a lot of attacks that you can just throw back at them. And a lot of boss fights probably get easier like that. And yes, you have shields that block up to 100% physical damage. But I really do never use the shield. When you can you can even do it on the giant tree sentinel here i'm not sure what exact attacks you can actually block with that but it's quite crazy how sometimes easier it can make your fights but we're talking about a basic beginner combat guide for people that are maybe not the best and not that experienced in these kinds of games and i feel like using blocks is definitely something for more experienced players See, I tried to use two times a block, didn't work. I mean, I'm not good at it, but it is just what it is. That is something I'm inexperience in. Beat never single souls like game in existence without blocking or parrying. Apart from Bloodborne and Sekiro, where obviously that is part of the game. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope this helped you with the basic combats to get more feeling for it. It's a lot down to you, just also obviously learning the bosses and everything, but having the samurai in the beginning will make your life tremendously more fun. And yes, sometimes like the Trace Sentinel Guardian, you can beat him straight up in the beginning of the game. But you do notice I not, don't, don't have that much HP, so you absolutely want to get a little bit more HP leveled up before you actually get in the comment with him. So you want to get Mariah and Torrent. And then you could also ride around on Torrent around him and hit him multiple times with light attacks until you bleed him. But the reality is if you hit him three times with this in a row, bop, 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 then he also gets staggered again. If you'd like to see more Elden Ring content, Warzone, Lost Ark, whatsoever, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Thank you for checking this out. I hope it did help you. Drop in the comments below if you're missing something, if you have more tips for beginners, and if you're looking for maybe a more in-depth guide, what is it what you're missing? What is it the information you would like to have about Elden Ring so you can inspire further videos to come? Thanks for being you. Thanks for being here. Have a great day.